Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live for March 24th, 2021. I am Joe Lynch. Today, it is my pleasure to be joined by Councillor Ben Ewan Campen, City Councillor from Ward 3. Ben, this is your second appearance. We didn't even have to pay you to come back. Um, I will have to follow up on that. Uh, <laughs> your good age, you. your, Thank you for having me back, Joe. Your agent, Councillor McLaughlin, uh, I think that's a negotiation between you and he. But welcome back to Media Center Live. Ben, I know that we have um, three major topics we want to talk about today um, on your agenda. But if you would give me a few minutes on the COVID update. Um, unfortunately, uh, as of today, there are now 80 deaths as a result of COVID in the city of Somerville. The good news, however, is that our uh, positivity rate for people who are being tested for COVID, to give you an example, in December of 2020, we were reporting 1,100 positive cases in a 14-day period. In March, we are now down to 388. So there is significant improval, improvement uh, from December to March. However, when you look at the last 14 days, that number is starting to tick up slightly. And that is cause for concern for anybody who's watching the public health. So the good sign is on COVID, our positivity rate is declining, our vaccination rate is climbing, more people are getting vaccinated. The thing that is the unknown is with the good weather, how many more people are gonna be very mobile? How many people are still abiding by? Wear your double masks, um, make sure that you're keeping abreast of all the latest developments um, and do not sit back and think that this thing is over. That is my commentary on COVID here in Somerville. Uh, for more information, anybody listening, please go to the City of Somerville COVID update website. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for that. Um, major topic, um, and you have uh, a meeting, or the city has a meeting tonight to talk about the civilian oversight of police. Ben, if you don't mind, set the stage for the audience, and then we can chit chat a little bit about it. Yes, and Joe, before I uh, talk about civilian oversight, I just want to say, um, you know, I, um, I, I hear a lot of extremely valid concerns about the vaccine rollout. You know, this is not something that the city council is involved in. It's a, it's a issue at the state level and the governor. And those are issues that are extremely real, um, the, the inequities and the kind of privatization of the vaccine rollout. But I think it is, it is very important that while we remain vigilant and aware of all those issues, that the, the top headline is go get vaccinated as soon as you can and encourage everyone in your life who, uh, who has any kind of questions about this to get vaccinated as soon as they are able to. I mean, that, that is the way out of this. We're really in a race between the variants and the vaccines. Um, so yes, I, I'm really happy to, to be here to talk about tonight's meeting on the civilian oversight of police. So this is, this is the city council's first public meeting, and it's really going to be kind of an information session tonight. Um, not, not so much a question answer back and forth, but a, a kind of getting all of us on the same page about what civilian oversight of police is, um, how it has been approached in other communities, why Somerville is, is taking this on now, and how people can get involved. And, and as a bit of background, so right now, if, if anyone in Somerville has a complaint or a concern about um, uh, Somerville police and whether that is something that is relatively minor or whether it is something that is extremely serious. Right now, that person, their only option is to make that complaint to the police department itself. And then the police department would investigate themselves through, through internal investigations. Um, I, I think no agency sh should be tasked with uh, regulating and investigating itself. There's an inherent conflict of interest there. And the idea of civilian oversight, and this exists in, in many communities around the country, is at its most simple to create a board of community members representing the diversity in Somerville. This is, you could call it a civilian review board. And that that board would have a role in internal investigations um, and would have the power to do those investigations and to make recommendations on discipline. Now, you know, that, that's a very simple description of how this could work. 
Um, but in addition, if you look at how civilian review has been implemented around the country, um, a lot of these boards do other things as well. Um, they could be involved in setting community priorities for public safety. They could be involved in um, setting policies around, uh, around use of force um, uh, or, or other policies. Um, in some communities, they're involved in hiring and firing and you know, trying to bring on um, um, new officers. So those are all things that um, are kind of on the table as, as we think about setting this up in Somerville. Um, and I think what I wanna emphasize is that this is one piece of how we want to approach um, rethinking public safety in Somerville. This is not uh, the be all and end all in my opinion, but I think it is very clear that um, this is an important step to bring transparency and accountability and kind of community involvement into public safety. Um, and, and if I can just add a little bit of the, the context here, um, during last summer, the, the city council um, and the mayor's office and the community, uh, we were really inundated with outreach in the aftermath of the George Floyd's murder, Breonna Taylor's murder, um, with calls to, to think, to, to rethink how policing works in our community. Um, and uh, one of the commitments that we made was to, to establish civilian oversight in Somerville. And there was an order put in by my colleagues, Councilor Willem Baugh, JT Scott and Lance Davis. They, they filed the order to initiate this process. And typically if the city council wants to write a law, we would work with the solicitor's office to come up with language. We might have a couple public hearings, a couple community meetings, and then pass the law. In this case, you know, create a civilian review board. We all felt very strongly that a process like this, where the, the whole concept is we need to bring the diversity of our community um, into the oversight of our police department, it wasn't gonna be enough to just have a couple meetings, have a public hearing and move forward. We really, really wanted to bring the public into this as much as we possibly can. Um, and to do really deliberate outreach in multiple languages, you kind of over a long period of time. And so we made the commitment that we were gonna hire two dedicated staff members, which is a first for the city council in our history. We hired an outreach coordinator and a legislative and policy analyst. Um, and we brought them on board. And tonight is our very first meeting. It's uh, Wednesday, March 24th, 6.30 p.m. If you go to somervillema.gov, it's civilian oversight, um, you will learn about kind of where we are in the process and how folks can get involved. So one quick follow-up. Thank you, Ben. One quick follow-up on that. I understand the concept of any organization trying to, and please forgive the word, self-police. Um, to evaluate their own job, um, to evaluate their policies and procedures. That is why, you know, as somebody who's involved in, in not-for-profit, uh, that's why we hire auditors. That's why we hire outside people to take a look at how we are running the organization. In Somerville specific, what is the need for that type of an oversight committee? Can you just kind of explain it? Because there are words flying around in our community these days that people don't quite understand the defund police versus an oversight committee. Is there a distinction in your mind there? Um, yes. So I think that's a, that's a great question. And this is a conversation where I think a lot of us are learning in real time and in, and in public about, um, about these issues. So um, one way that might be helpful to talk about this, over the past several months, um, Tufts University, a research professor there, did a survey of Somerville residents. They sent a letter in the mail to something like 12,000 residents and they said, here is a link to a survey. We wanna hear your, your thoughts on policing. And um, the, the results of that were just posted a couple weeks ago. And if you Google you know, Tufts Somerville police study, I'm, I'm sure you can find this. Um, I don't have the exact numbers right in front of me, but one of the real take home messages there was that there are a lot of issues that arise in our community that are not violent, that are not um, inherently criminal things, you know, issues around mental health, issues around homelessness, issues around um, overdoses, um, and then also kind of, you know, issues around 
traffic enforcement, traffic details, things like this, where large majorities of the community feel like we've been asking the police to handle all of these issues. Whereas in fact, that's probably, if you were designing a system from scratch, that's not how you would design it. That said, there is a, a category of kind of emergencies slash situations where there is overwhelming support for that. We, we do want, um, uh, you know, trained law enforcement officers to arrive, you know, violent situations, kind of inherently really volatile situations, uh, certain criminal situations. There, there's overwhelming support for there being law enforcement that, that turns up for that. Um, and so I think the, the, the concept of civilian oversight has to do with for those issues and for that, that response, uh, the, in order to build community trust, it's important that there be transparency and accountability around that. So um, I think, listen, I think you can view it on a spectrum. If you want to say worst case scenario, um, you know, the, the police department wants to cover up misconduct. Well, then you want an external investigation to be able to, to determine that and, and ferret it out. Um, best case scenario, um, there is a complaint made against an officer. The internal investigations does, you know, handles an investigation, uh, finds fault and does appropriate discipline. You know, something that the public would feel comfortable with. I think the public has a right to, to see that process and know that that process uh, happened too. And I, I think in a lot of ways that would actually build trust. So I think, you know, in my opinion, uh, as we approach civilian oversight in Somerville, the question for me is not, should we do it or not? I mean, I, I think that the number in this, uh, in this survey, residents of Somerville were asked, uh, do you think there should be civilian oversight? And some, you know, 80% of Somerville supports this. I think there's overwhelming support for the concept. Uh, what we're starting to do tonight is to talk more about how the details, how to make sure that we do it right, that um, that we create the structure that people believe in and want to participate in, and that has the necessary powers to build that public trust. Yeah, <clears throat> the reason I was trying to make a distinction in my mind is that words are very powerful. And when people hear the words defund the police, there is a perception that that is to blow it all up and start all over again. And I don't, this is my opinion, Ben, um, and I did fill out the survey, thank you very much. Um, my opinion is that any organization within our governmental structures need outside oversight. Um, and it's not a case of where I don't trust. There have been incidents where I've been outraged at internal investigations within the police department. And certainly from my viewpoint, they covered up certain things and it never made it into the court systems or into the union realm or into anybody else because someone was protecting someone. Those are few and far between. So that's why I started the question about what is the need and how does the community feel about it? My two responses in the survey was yes, there is a need, um, but I wanna be extremely careful in delineating is there a need for outside oversight? You bet. Do we have to keep in mind that there is no such thing in urban life as no police force? That, that, that is just off the table for me. And clear cut definition or a clear cut example of that was the tragedy in Boulder. We saw police en masse trying to protect the public from a crazed gunman. That will never go away. So I, I applaud uh, you know, the city council and the community for saying, yeah, we need to take a look at this. I mean, I don't know when the last time we had anyone take a look at internal procedures for the Somerville Police Department. And it may turn out that we just tinker around the edges on this thing to build that trust versus blow it up and start again. Uh, I, you know, uh, you know me, Ben. I'm, of a certain age, I've seen certain people try to do things in a very quick, um, not very well thought through manner. What do you, what do you expect from tonight? Um, the presentation and then at some point, quick uh, Q and A from the community? Yes, so tonight we are not having a Q and A. And the, the reason for that is a technical one 
which is that um, this the the presentation for tonight has actually been translated into multiple language that will be delivered simultaneously. So we, we've asked the, the the counselors and and members of the public to to hold off tonight on back and forth so that we can kind of get information out there around what is the process and how can you get involved. And, and I'll just say right now, uh, we have created our own survey that we're asking Somerville residents to do, which you can find at somervillema.gov slash civilian oversight. Whatever your opinions are on this, we want to hear them. Um, we will be setting up smaller group kind of uh, back and forth discussions going forward. Um, you know, the idea being we want to make sure that people, whatever your views on this are, feel comfortable sharing us in a kind of back and forth situation instead of in front of hundreds of people standing at a virtual podium, you know, putting yourself out there. And of course, as with anything the city council does, you can always email the city council, call your city councilors and make your voices heard that way. Um, and I think going forward, once we have a more specific proposal around the legislation and what our proposal actually is, then I think we will certainly have the more kind of formal public hearing. And, and, you know, Joe, let me just say, I've also, we've, I've, I've started to get um, really interesting feedback on this. Um, I've heard from some people who say, you know, we've waited years for this. This is just common sense. Of course we need this. I have also heard from people who have said, you know what, this is, you know, my, I know someone who was on a civilian oversight board in another community and they had no power. They couldn't do anything. You know, it was just to, you know, the, the government put it up to as something to kind of build trust, but they never really could do anything and their their suggestions weren't taken seriously and, you know, they left feeling kind of disempowered. And I, I think that that would really be a shame as well if we were to create something to, to encourage people to get involved in this process and then set something up that in fact has no power. Um, I think that that would be a, a real um, uh, you know, a failure on our part. And, and as you said, I think it, it is incumbent upon all of us to not just do this because it is a, a new term that everyone wants to get involved in and do it as quick as possible, but to really take the time to, to listen to everybody um, that has different views on this and create legislation that, that can last um, and, and that actually builds trust and does what it's intended to do. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'm hearing in your, your cautionary tale here is, you don't expect results next month. This is a process that the community, the counselors, the mayor, the police, the unions, all will have to go through to understand what is the need? How do we correct this? How do we make a structural change to this thing? Uh, I'm fully on board for reviews because as you know, you know, you have to look at both sides, Ben. What are the most effective boards and commissions that we have? And what are ones that were thrown up there in name only and have no teeth? So my, my hope for all the efforts is that we have an effective oversight. Um, there's now a new call for an oversight, civilian oversight of the city council. <laughs> How do you feel about that one? <laughs> Bring it on. I mean, that's what we have every two years of the elections. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. That's why I caution people on that. One final question on that one, Ben. Um, I assume that this presentation tonight will be recorded and re-aired on government TV. Is that Absolutely. correct? Okay. Yes, yes, thank you for that. And you know, I, I also wanna be conscientious. I, I have heard from residents who've said, I, I'm honestly not comfortable sharing, you know, showing up at these meetings with my own name if I'm gonna be critical of the police. So I, I wanna be clear, this will be um, viewable, you know, on government TV, it'll be live streamed and this, this content will be uh, easy to obtain for anyone, whether or not you, you know, want to log into a Zoom tonight. Nope. Very good. Let's move in, if you don't mind, Ben. New surveillance oversight policy. Um, you and a couple of the other um, counselors were kind of the, the architects of guiding us through uh, what that policy means. You want to take it away from there? Yes. So uh, another issue that involves the word oversight <laughs> and the police department. So um, two years ago, I, I submitted an ordinance that is focused on surveillance technology. Um, so I, I know a lot of people were aware that we banned face recognition. Um, and that was a kind of one off, you know, what I'd call like techno technological whack-a-mole, where we said this is a technology that is moving really fast. Um, you know, the government tracking everybody's face as they move through public spaces. We're going to ban that. But what about all these other technologies that we keep hearing about? And this, this could be things as simple as surveillance cameras in a public square, 
or it could be things like license plate readers, which are these machines that can be on top of some police cars that just kind of in real time, every license plate they see gets sucked up into a database. Or, a or it could booths. be toll booths, yes. Right, yep. So um, basically what this ordinance says is, um, we think that the public has a right to know what surveillance technologies the city is using and what their policies are for making sure that privacy is protected. Um, and we think the city has a duty to be transparent and open about this. We serve the public and the public has, has a role in this. So, you know, as a new city councilor, when I first filed this, to me, this was really um, honestly kind of surprising that this wasn't the way that it already worked. It says if, if the government, you know, usually we're talking about the police department, but there are some other examples as well, wants to buy surveillance equipment, the way it works currently is they do that with, with the mayor's approval, you know, they can kind of buy different technologies. Um, what this ordinance says is for any surveillance technology, they need to file a report to the city council that says, this is the technology that we want to have the ability to use in the future. This is how it works. This is the privacy controls. This is the training. This is how the data is protected. This is who has access to the data. Um, and then there's a vote on this. And, and I want to be really clear. This does not mean every time the police wants to use a surveillance camera in a specific investigation, they have to ask us. No, that is not what's going on. This is to say, um, the, to get kind of preemptive permission on specific uh, technologies and how they can be used going forward. So for example, one of the technologies that we approved are surveillance cameras at certain locations around the city. Um, and those and have been, I'm sorry, Ben, those have been in play for years. Oh, we, yes, yes. We installed a lot of those CCTVs, uh, cameras. We installed those as far back as, I want to say, 2009, 2007. Some of those so were that, in that, play. So that's a very good point. Um, the, this ordinance, there's a grace period between when we passed the law and then the first step of actually implementing it is the city taking an inventory of what are we already doing. So one of those things, as you say, was these surveillance cameras. And um, I, I want to be clear, even before this ordinance, specifically on surveillance cameras, there was a you know, publicly available policy around them, and you could find a map of where they're located. So they, they were by no means a secret, and there was a, a policy on that. Um, and all we were saying on the city council was, going forward, we believe that the same uh, sort of regulation should apply to every other possible surveillance technology. So, you know, to take an extreme example, there are these devices called a stingray that you hear about sometimes at large protests, which is the big uh, technological object <laughs> that police departments can bring to say a protest. They point it to a crowd of people and they suck up all of their cell phone data. I do not believe the Somerville city uh, the police should have one of those and they did not seek to get one of those. But if they had wanted one, they would have submitted a, a request. They would have outlined exactly how the technology works et cetera, et cetera. And then the city council would have had public hearing and taken a vote on whether we think the Somerville police should have a stingray. So that, that did not happen. What did happen is that the city uh, over several months, they did, took an inventory of all the different technologies and they submitted, forget the total number, it was something like nine or 10 requests. And this, so these are different types of cameras, um, a, a GPS device um, that they put on uh, bikes. If there's a raft of bicycle thefts, so they'll, they'll put a bike out that has a little GPS tracker, um, things like that. And um, over several months, what we were able to do in, the, in on the city council is to have public discussions and, and back and forth around what we wanted to see for each of these policies to make sure that we all felt comfortable with them. And some of the requests we did not support. So license plate readers is an example where we, um, the administration withdrew that request. Um, they, if the, in the future, maybe they'll come back and they'll, they'll try to convince the city council there's a real need for it. Um, but that was one where the city council uh, was not comfortable. Um, uh, the other policies that were approved, um, these will all be posted on a website soon. But I, w the thing that I feel is really positive about it is I think a member of the public um, now is able to go to a website, find out what surveillance technologies the city has and exactly how they're used, what the policies around them are. And, and I actually feel that this, you know, a, a member of the public viewing these would feel a lot more comfortable than they, you know, you, you don't have to worry that some wild newfangled surveillance technology is tracking you as you go around because you know exactly what the, the police department has and how they're using it. Well, we could, we could say that we leave all of that to Facebook anyway, Facebook and Google. Um, I look well, at you know, it. You bring up a, a real point. 
the, yeah, I, I look at it. Is going on, a lot of the tracking that's going on is private and it is just between individuals. Right. So, so I guess I come down to once again, um, dragging certain mindsets into the 21st century. It has to be explained to people that surveillance and your privacy are going hand in hand. And that as an elected officials and as appointed officials as the police are, we have to be extremely careful on how we use our latest technology for law enforcement purposes. Um, that's within the control of the city of Somerville and its mayor, its elected body, its police unions, everything else. The one thing that someone said to me when they talked about surveillance is, if you really want to go off the grid, get rid of your cell phone. <laughs> so the technology is out there, Ben, whether it's a police force or it's a private citizen to invade your privacy or a business to invade your privacy. So I, 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 I love the idea of controlling new technology um, and making sure that it's used in the proper way. So good for us. Highland Ave, I want to move in because we probably only have about two and a half minutes left. Highland Ave, out in front of um, City Hall and then Spring Hill. Um, you've got your hands full with what's going to take place. Um, we have proposals for bus lanes. We have proposals for bike lanes. We have construction update for the Spring Hill, um, the Spring Hill streetscapes area. We have big construction coming in terms of, I, I think we still have a water and sewer initiative that's going on in Spring Hill. You wanna to try to um, prep people for what's coming <laughs> in the Spring Absolutely. Hill district. So let me just say for, for anyone who hasn't heard, um, I would recommend Google Spring Hill streetscapes. And that will bring you to a website that has all the information on this. This is a large scale sewer replacement project that's covering Spring Hill, which is the area between Highland and Summer, uh, kind of from the, the high school city hall over towards Davis. And with that, there's going to be major improvements made around pedestrian safety, uh, bus improvements, bus bike safety. Um, and and there is a lot of um, there is a lot of good that is going to come from this. And I would just encourage everyone to visit that website and familiarize yourself with those plans. We have um, we have streets. Uh, the joke here for native Somervillians is the city of Somerville was never planned. It just grew and it grew out of cow paths and wagon wagon wheels. And, you know, we can still find cobblestone under our streets and defunct rail lines that are no longer active. These major initiatives and these upgrades to our infrastructure um, try the patience of most people. But I, I will say that, you know, if we are going to compete in the 21st century as a community to attract new business, to attract residents, to keep this uh, a safe community, we need to do these things. And, and let me just say, Joe, I, I think, you know, we were talking earlier about public safety. We have lost far too many pedestrians to, uh, to automotive crashes in the last couple of years. And for all the money that we put into public safety, I think that the, some of the most important thing we can do to protect people is to make our streets safer. Councilor Ben Ewan Campen, our time is up. I hate hearing that. I used to hate it when I heard it from my therapist. Our time is up, I'm sorry. Um, but thank you for coming back in. Um, we look for forward to seeing more of you. And uh, one, one quick thing, um, running for re-election this year. Yes, I'm running for re-election, Ward 3 City Councilor. You heard it first on Somerville Media Center. Ben, thank you very much. For the thank Somerville you. Media Center, I'm Joe Lynch. Please, as always, stay safe, stay informed. We'll see you next time.